This model is an abstracted map of the Cotswolds in the UK. I made it as an illuminated piece of wall art and to help visualise two famous algorithms for calculating the shortest path between places. It uses a Raspberry Pi Pico, NeoPixel LEDs and is programmed with Python. Many computer science students in the UK will likely first learn about shortest path algorithms from Craig and Dave's resources, where they use a map of Gloucestershire to illustrate the shortest path between a few towns. These resources caught my eye when I taught this, because I live in Gloucestershire and I know these routes well. Inspired by their example, I decided to create a more detailed version that covers the entire Cotswolds region. In my version, each polygon represents a town or village in the Cotswolds. I found the geometric design on Pinterest, it's by Carey Smith. Smith's work features a variety of asymmetric, straight-lined pieces that evoke a map-like quality. To create my model, I created an SVG version of Smith's design, ensuring that the polygons were transparent. Then, using open maps and Photoshop, I overlaid the design onto a map of the Cotswolds. Using this as a guide, I assigned each polygon to a different town or village within the region. The resulting map includes Tewkesbury, Evesham and Stratford-upon-Avon to the north, and Stroud, Sirencester, Farringdon and a tiny corner of Oxford to the south. Using a cry-cut machine, I created two versions of the map, a vinyl sticker and a mount board cutout. The vinyl sticker's adhesive backing allows for precise placement of the LEDs onto the 5mm foam board although it remains hidden from view in the final piece. The mountboard cutout, however, remains visible on the completed model. I used PVA glue to stick this to some heavyweight Luchador fabric from Spun Art to provide a clean and finished look. The Luchador fabric, made of polyester fibers fused in a random web-like fashion, creates pleasing light diffusion. The lights are individually addressable NeoPixel LED strips which are cut to size. Some towns needed only one LED, but others, due to their larger size, required up to 11 LEDs. The flexible nature of the LED strips made it simple to position them and insert the terminals through the foam board. With a healthy dose of permanent marker, I made the groupings obvious along with the direction the data and positive and negative terminals would need to follow. There are thousands of tutorials about soldering LEDs on YouTube, so I'll skip the details of my clumsy attempts. Eventually, I connected all 41 towns for a total of 144 LEDs. To avoid dimming due to voltage drop, I used Wago connectors to split the power and inject it at three different points along the string of LEDs. I needed to add depth to the model to allow the light to diffuse properly and prevent individual LEDs from being visible. To achieve this, I built a frame from mountboard strips, carefully cutting sections to size and gluing them in place behind the mountboard outline. This effectively prevented light from one town from bleeding into another. I created a crude grid system and estimated the center of each town by marking it with an orange dot. Then, I approximated the X and Y coordinates for each town in an optimistic move, I uploaded an image of my map to Gemini AI, hoping it would generate the code for me. However, Gemini cheekily suggested I do it manually. While this wasn't the shortcut I'd hoped for, the AI did provide a very useful function for calculating the distance between two points. The function uses Pythagoras' theorem to calculate the distance between two points. It finds the difference in the X and Y coordinates of each point, squares those differences, adds them together, and then takes the square root of the result. To explore the code fully, please check out the GitHub repository linked in the description. Briefly though, a Raspberry Pi Pico controls the lights, which I programmed using MicroPython. The Cotswold.py file contains a class that defines town objects. Each town object includes a name, a list of its LEDs, X and Y coordinates, a list of its neighbours, and other variables that the shortest path algorithms use. These variables track whether the algorithm has visited the town, its shortest distance from the start node and the previous node. The file bundles all these elements into a list at the end. Then, the main.py file imports the town using the Python line from Cotswolds import towns. When the model is first switched on, all towns in the Cotswold light up a faint red. The program then randomly chooses two towns as the starting and ending points of the path. 
In this example, Byberry as our starting point and Chipping Norton as the destination. Dijkstra's algorithm finds the shortest path by initially assuming that each node, or town in this case, is infinitely far from the starting point. The starting location's distance is set to zero. The algorithm then calculates the straight line distance to each of its neighbours. If this calculated distance is smaller than the currently recorded distance for a neighbour, the algorithm updates the neighbour's distance and sets its previous town to the current location. You'll see these neighbours glow bright red to indicate this calculation is happening. Once the algorithm checks all neighbours, it marks the starting town as visited. The process then repeats. The algorithm selects the unvisited neighbour with the shortest distance from the start as the new current town. It calculates the distance of this town's neighbours by adding the current town's distance from the start to the calculated straight line distance. The algorithm continues until it visits the destination town. We can then trace the shortest path by following the previous town links back to the start. For completeness, this is what that route would actually look like on Google Maps. Watching the algorithm at work is very satisfying. It feels like watching a ghost in the machine blindly feel its way around especially when shown in time-lapse. At a slower speed, it's almost hypnotic, like watching a lava lamp and subconsciously wondering where the next bubble will go. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this, please consider liking the video or subscribing. I plan to follow up soon with an implementation of the A-Star algorithm, which uses a bit of common sense and estimation to avoid going too far in the wrong direction. I also have some interesting ideas for visualising other algorithms, so stay tuned if you're interested.